Back Death Toll Racing in my messy, messy shop. I am finishing up on my come and swap on this old Ford. There will be a whole series on this coming out. Um, I just need to edit millions and millions of gigabytes of video. So what this little short is, or long format vertical video, which is my first one in podcast form because I don't want to actually have to edit it. I thought this would be very handy um, because if you're doing a conversion on old trucks like this, putting more modern engines in, not that a 96 Cummins is particularly modern, but it's modern enough for an issue to come up. And that is the ignition switches on these old trucks, cars, Ford, Chevy, Dodge. Um, some of them, this may not be an issue, but 99% of them it is going to be. When you have the ignition on, you have power to your ignition, obviously. When you have it in start, you don't, not coming from the ignition switch. And that's because Power to your ignition system while cranking came from the I-terminal on your starter relay. So on this, it's on the fender, on a Chevy, it'd be on the back, I think this way. No, they're this way, on the Chevy. Might be this way. Um, and that's where that gold terminal is. This goes to your ignition system. You can identify that in a car show or something when you're there and everyone's leaving and you got the guys that are going, rawr, 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 nothing, 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 nothing. They let off and boom, it starts right up. Um, those are the guys that didn't realize what that I terminal did or came off or got disconnected somehow. So now that problem on the new engine here doesn't have that terminal on the starter. I'm using a six liter Ford Power Stroke starter uh, because I'm using a ZF5, big block Ford ZF5 on a Cummins 12 valve. Okay, <laughs> there'll be more on that in my, in my full video series. But anyway, six liter or even if it was the Dodge motor, the Dodge starter doesn't have that terminal. So now you're stuck with an ignition switch that doesn't provide power while cranking. Um, that could be resolved with a relay and that'd be, that would be fairly simple. And that's essentially all this is. So that way, when you hit your starter, you could tie in a relay that then goes to your, is tied into your ignition system. So that that relay, every time you hit your starter, the relay trips and that the only thing coming out of that is just tying into your ignition. And that would make it, that would be your physical disconnect, just like, just like this, if that makes sense. But that's not what this video is about. This video, all I'm trying to do is run a fuel pump while cranking. And I don't want to back feed and make my starter go when I turn my ignition on. So I don't want to have a relay there just for that function because it would just be going to another relay that was going to the fuel pump. So I'd have two relays just to do one function. And so to fix that, what I'm using is this, and this is called a diode. And what these do is it allows power to go through. See the white stripe up top that I've wore off by holding onto it. It'll, this will allow power to go this way, but it won't allow power. And I'm talking on the positive side to go this way. Electrical guys, um, if you can do a write up, I'll pin it to the top. Or if, if you have a quick way of explaining exactly how these work, this is a 15 amp one. So that means whatever accessory I'm powering through this can't draw more than 15 amps. They make these smaller, but, uh, unless you're putting them on a circuit board or something, I, I feel like the oversized ones are better. Um, but th there may be applications where you, you would actually need a smaller one. I don't know what that would be. Maybe something that was very, very sensitive and only required a very, very small amount of voltage. Maybe this would allow just enough voltage through to trip that item and the smaller one wouldn't. I don't know. Uh, again, if you're an electrical guy, uh, you can write that up. But for, an art, for my scenario, these work just fine isolating a circuit like that. So now I can just run my ignition wire to my relay for my fuel pump and then tie in the start wire that would be going to my, that goes to my starter into that ignition wire, but having this there, that way when I turn my ignition on, it's not also trying to make my starter run. Uh, because this will be shielding it from that. Um, so now if you're a physical, a visual guy, I'm going to show you with a test light it working and maybe that will make everything make more sense. I can't edit the video if I upload it directly. I don't think this is the first time I've done a vertical long format, but I just want to directly uh, post it. So anyway, positive lights up, stripe up. It works. Power's going through it that way. And I know that's not how the electrical current actually works, but for layman guys like us, that's how we're going to visualize it because it, 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 it works that way. 
So power going through it this way allows it to light up. If I were to spin this over, so the stripe's now on the bottom, so it has current, nothing. So it won't light up going that way. And then it lights up going that way. So that's the layman's way of, of describing it. Uh-oh, my light's dying. But it, it works. And so now this is a lot simpler to put in than wiring up an additional relay with the four wires you would, it would be required for the additional relay, which would be the physical disconnect like this one from the circuit. So this is gonna work. So if you were to apply more than 15 amps, which I won't be in, in my scenario, all I'm doing is tripping a relay, which is milliamps. If you're doing something higher current, like say, like me in high school, I tried, we used to call the parking lights, pimping lights in high school, 140 years ago. And I thought I was real clever because I hooked my parking lights up to my ignition, going, ha ha, now I just turn on my ignition and my pimping lights come on. And uh, well, the problem was if I leave my headlights on, the engine doesn't shut off or my lights on, on the switch, the engine doesn't shut off. So that's when I learned about diodes. So I went to Radio Shack and bought one that was like milliamps. It was way too small. And it worked for about five minutes until it melted and fell in half because it was way too small of a diode for running a bunch of incandescent light bulbs on my old truck. So. That's when I learned about diodes. Um, and they are a handy, handy thing to have in your toolbox. You'll be amazed how often you use these things. So I just, I just keep the 15 amp ones in there. Um, I have yet to ever need one for more than 15 amps. And in fact, very rarely do I use them for anything but relays. But anyway, hopefully that helps.